Hello, good morning, children. Well, welcome to e-learning class. We're going to look at uh, mathematics this morning, and the topic is the Gibbelian fractions. Gibbelian fractions are built by multiplying or dividing the numerators and the denominators of the fraction by the same multiplier or devices. So we're going to look at some examples and how equivalent fractions are being solved. Example 1 says, find the first five equivalent fractions of the following numbers. The first number that is given is 2 over 3. So how do we now find the equivalent fraction? Now, let's quickly look at this number that is given, or this fraction, 2 over 3, is already the first equivalent fraction because I'm going to use this method by multiplying 2 times 1, all over 2, 3 times 1. So 2 times 1 gives us 2, all over 3. So this is the first equivalent fraction of this number. Then the second one, you use the same, 2 you multiply by 2. Multiply the denominator also by 2. So we have 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 2 is 6. So this is the second equivalent fraction. You go to the next one, write out the, the fraction. Then the next step, remember you multiply the first one by 1. The second one you multiply by 2. And the third one you have to multiply by 3. So we have 2 times 3 is 6. Divided by 3 times 3 which is what? 9. So this is the third equivalent fraction. Then the last one we were told to find the first 5. Okay, this is the fourth one we're going to solve now. 2 over 3 times, this time around we multiply by 4. 4 over 4. So we have 2 times 4 is 8, all over 3 times 4, which is 12. And the last one that we're going to look at is multiply by 5. God, they told us to find the first 5, so we have 5 over 5. 2 times 5 is 10, then all over 3 times 5, which is 15. So all these are the equivalent fractions. So you can now write them out. 2 over 3, 4 over 6, 6 over 9, 8 over 12, and 10 over 15. So what this means is that all these fractions are almost the same because if I divide this, it's going to give me this fraction. If I divide this, it's going to give me this fraction. If I reduce this, so all of them, when I reduce all of them, is going to give me the same fraction. That's why we say they are equivalent. They are almost the same. So that is the meaning of equivalent fraction. So if I am giving 8 over 12, when I reduce it, it's going to give me the same thing as 2 over 3. So that is this is how we solve the equivalent fraction. We're going to look at the example 2. Let's quickly look at the example 2. Calculate the value of x in the equation below. The equation is x over 4 is, is equal to 42 over 4. Now, we have x, which is an unknown number. Other numbers are known, so we want to look at the value of x. And in this case, this fraction is equals the next fraction. So when you see this in any fraction, when a fraction is equals another fraction, the rule is that you do what? You use multiply, cross multiplication. So I'm going to cross multiply. Cross multiply means what? Multiply the up by the down and multiply the up of this number by the, the denominator. So we're going to do that now. 4 times, as all, most experts always multiply the one that has the unknown first. So we have 4 times L, which is what? 4x equals 40, 42 times 4. Let's multiply that. 4 times 2 is 8. Then 4 times 4 is what? 16. Now, how do we now get the value of x? We divide both sides by 4 so that 4 will be eliminated. What do I mean by that is to make x the subject of the formula. So what I'm going to do is to multiply both sides by 4. You can now see that if I multiply both sides by 4, okay, so let's divide both sides by 4. If you divide this by 4, divide this by 4. You can now see that 4 has cancelled itself. So 4 cancel here, 1 cancel here, 1. So 4 has been eliminated. So you are left with x. x equals, let's divide this. 4 here, 1. 4 into 16, 4. 4 into 8 is what? 2. So we have 42. So the value of x 
which was unknown now is known. So you can now replace this x by what? 42. So the answer is what? 42. That is how to find the, the missing value. Let's quickly look at the example 3. Example 3 says if n over 6 equals 7 over 3, find the value of n. So you can see that example 3 and example 2 are very similar. You use the same method because we have equal sign. A fraction equals another fraction. What did I say you should do? You cross multiply. So we're going to use that same method here. Always start with the one that has the unknown. So 3 times n is going to give us 3n, which is equals 6 times 7 is what? 6 times 6 is 36. 6 times 7 is what? 42. Okay? So we're going to make n the subject of the formula. What do we do? We now divide both sides by 3. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3. 3 has cancelled itself. So I'm left with n, which is 42 divided by 3. So let's do the division. 3 divided by 7, 3 goes into 4. How many times? 1 times remainder 1. You add the 1 to 2, to 2 becomes 12. So 3 divided by 2, how many times? 4. So we have 14. So our n is equal to 14. The next example is find the missing digit to complete this equivalent fraction. All of them are all the same. In this case, instead of using n or x, I decided to use the box or the square. That square means unknown. I can decide to use any number of the alphabet or I can decide to use a square box or whatever to represent the unknown. So in this case, you still apply the same principle by multiplying both sides. That is cross multiplying. Use the method of cross multiplying. That's assuming I can call it that the box. I can decide to call the box any of the numbers of the alphabet. Let the box be, let me take y. So here I can change my box to becomes y. So y times 5 will give me 5y equals 4 times 10 is give me what? 40. So now because I'm looking for the unknown, which is y, what I do, what I need to do is to divide both sides by 5. Make sure whenever you are dividing, the number that you are going to divide must eliminate the other number. What I'm trying to say is that if I'm using 2 here, you can see that 2 cannot eliminate 5. So I must use a number that can make it eliminated. So in this case, 5 can eliminate 5. And I'm left with only y. Then 40 divided by 5 is going to give me what? 8. So this is how to find equivalent fraction. So please take note and go through the examples one after the other. Example 1 through example 4. Then you continue to look at it again and again. Then when I send the assignment, you'll be able to solve them very correctly. Thank you very much.